How's it going folks? Today I wanted to do a quick video overview of my kayak fishing rig. Uh, this is the kayak that I use in all my tournaments and all my fun fishing adventures. Uh, it is a 2022 Hobie Outback and uh, before I go over all the stuff that I use and attach to it, I uh, just want you to let you know that all the links to everything I use will be down in the description if you want to pick up any of this stuff for yourself and add it to your rig. And if you have any questions about any of the stuff I use, feel free to leave that in the comments. So let's get started up here at the front. Again, this is a 2022 Hobie Outback. So right up here in the front, it's kind of hard to see there, um, I have a Burley Pro Bumper Pro. And what that is, is a piece of plastic that goes over the bow of the boat and it is there to protect the bow whenever you run it ashore or run into anything else. And I think they're well worth the money, uh, especially for the peace of mind, knowing that your kayak's protected if you run up on a rock or something, because that area of the boat does get a lot of wear and tear, uh, just because without thinking, you'll just run it on to the sand and stuff. And a fully weighted kayak will wear down plastic pretty quick on a, a sandy beach. So yeah, that's uh, the Burley Pro Bumper Bro. And then here I have my net. It's a Lee Fisher Sport aluminum net. It does float. One thing I don't like about it is it's a, uh, a mesh net, not the rubber kind. So I think uh, that'll be a future upgrade eventually. So moving on down, here's something I kind of jerry-rigged together. Uh, this is my, my running lights uh, for when it's dark and I'm running the motor. This is just a cheapo red and green light from Amazon that I zip tied to a half inch uh, piece of PVC. And that goes down into the mast port of the Outback. So if you didn't know, the Outback, you can put a sail on it and that's what that's for. Um, but that's uh, not gonna be used on my kayak because I don't know how to sail. Uh, so I use it for my running lights. And eventually I think I will get some mounting, uh, mounted lights on the front so it's a little bit more where the lights are supposed to be because this is technically not where they're supposed to be, but I think it works and I don't think anybody's ever gonna complain about it to me about it. But yeah, just moving on. So here we have the drive. This is a, a Mirage Drive 180 uh, kick-up fins. Uh, these are the turbo fins. The, um, the kick-up portion, if you run into something, it comes forward so you don't break the mast on your fins. Um, I think that's this is probably the best drive that Hobie's ever built. You might be asking, what about the 360 drive? I still think the 360 drive is too complicated, and I think it's too fragile. So I don't think I'll ever switch over to one of those. I'll keep using the 180 drive kick up fins uh, until they stop making them. So then we have my little Yak Attack camera mount here. Uh, this is. Uh, just for kind of facing back towards me when I want to talk to the camera and attached to it I have my GoPro Hero 11 black and it's uh, mounted using uh, this quick release mount here I did do a special video on this so if you're interested in this just uh, check my other videos you'll see a video titled uh, GoPro setup or something to that extent all right so right here we have a Yak Attack Roto Grip holding my net have a low rant elite fs9 uh, and then this is like a lens cap holder for a camera um, I just use it because I have lost one of these actually at the lake I'm currently at never to be found again because I forgot where I lost it at so from now on I'm gonna keep uh, one of these little tethers attached to my cover for my fish finder so I don't lose it All right and then right here go to the back on the fish finder I did take an old rod cover and I kind of shortened it cut it up a bit so I can keep my cables uh, managed properly and so far I'm really liking this but I think uh, I'm gonna find a better piece of uh, expandable uh, plastic whatever this is called um, to cover that up with because this one's kind of falling apart a bit all right and then mounted to I mount my fish finder using a ram ball mount system uh, attached to a Hobie ram ball mount 
Uh, so this is for the, uh, I forget what this stuff is called. This is like the, uh, the HREL, but it's got the port in it, um, or the, the gear slot. So this just attaches to the HREL, tightens up. It's pretty solid. It's not the most solid thing, but I don't think you're gonna find a solid thing on any kayak, unless you uh, bolt it with a plate or something. Um, and then that's just using the uh, the normal mount from the the Lawrence for the Lawrence Elite FS9, attached to a um, Ram fish finder plate. I don't know if you can see it under there, but the whole thing is managed by these um, uh, these balls here, and you just tension using this knob right here, and that uh, keeps everything where it's supposed to be for the most part. All right, so coming all around, I have a Yak Attack Omega Pro uh, rod holder. I've had this one for a while, and it's getting it's starting to get a little loose. I need to tighten it up or something. And then I have my throttle control from my Newport NK180, and that's attached to a piece of starboard. And then using two Yak Attack T bolts with some uh, some thumb screws or thumb thumb uh, nuts uh, that holds it in place very securely. Very pleased with that. And then a pair of dinky pliers. Uh, they're getting a little rusty. It's probably time to replace them. All right, and then at the seat. I have my kayak cushion. This is a Florida Kayak Bass Trail Edition. Um, if you're not using one of these, you, uh, you're missing out because they're pretty comfortable. They make it a lot more bearable to sit all day and fish. And I have my life jacket, which is a NRS Chinook. It's getting a little old, probably time to replace it. It's missing one zipper and it's uh, starting to get frayed along a lot of the edges. All right. So then I have my cooler, and this is a Magellan brand. Uh, it's from Academy, Sports Academy, and uh, it does pretty good. I like it. The zipper's real tough on it. I'm not super thrilled about that, but it does its job, and it's uh, pretty easy to manage. Okay, and then I have my battery box, and inside is a uh, 50 amp hour, 24 volt amped outdoors lithium ion battery. Uh, and that powers my Newport by itself. And then holding the battery box together, because these battery boxes from West Marine come with a really cheap strap that's practically worthless. I took an old uh, NRS strap and just shortened it a little bit. And I use that instead. And I can actually use this as a carrying handle now. So uh, that's uh, one improvement on that. Okay, and then I have my catch board. Right now I'm using a 26 inch. I'm probably gonna get a 32 carbonite board here soon. Um, Cause I've seen plenty of 26 and a quarter fish caught in some of these lakes I'm fishing. So, and I don't wanna lose that quarter inch uh, in a tournament <laughs> if I really need it. Uh, so I think I'll get that 32 inch board here eventually. And then I have a catch holder for my ID cards and then I also have the other catch holder which is zip tied to one of my rod holders on my black pack and that does slide up with down a little bit but for the most part it stays where it's supposed to and it holds my board really well and out of the way so I'm really pleased with that all right so okay I got my uh, GoPro stuff and then I have my black pack. This is a 13 by 13, or no, it's a 16 by 16. It's the big one. <laughs> it's six rod holders. And then on the top, I just have a Yak Attack Mighty Mount plate. And then that holds my safety flag. And on the inside, I have some Plano Edge 3700 boxes that I keep most of my lures in. And then I have a Plano Edge, I think this is a 3600 terminal tackle box. And then this, 
stuff out of the way is just an, a plastic ammo crate from Harbor Freight and it just happens to fit perfectly in there like that. I cut the lid off because uh, I didn't feel like I needed it and uh, it holds all my soft plastics that I'm not using and then some just miscellaneous, bait, miscellaneous baits that I throw up here. Uh, clam shells, I, I don't like clam shells so they just kind of like get thrown in there and they just sit on top and Sometimes I lose them and I have to go back and pick them up, but it's just how it is. <laughs> All right, what else? Okay, so let's, let's go over the motor. So up here, I have a beefy stainless steel clasp or, or hook um, that I use to hold my motor in the up position. And that goes into a T-bolt eyelet and you can get like, I think six or eight of these on Amazon for like 10, or like really cheap. Um, again, links in the description if you're looking for any of this stuff. Um, and they hold pretty well once you tighten them down really good. Uh, and I, I just took a screwdriver in there and tight, got it tight as I could um, without breaking the plastic. And then I use a, a paracord rope, comes all the way back here goes through two more of these little eyelets. This one is angled a little bit, so it kind of guides the rope better. And that goes all the way back here to the Newport NK180. I'm using a stainless steel, um, I believe this is an anchor uh, eye. It's actually loose right there. I gotta tighten that when I get home. Um, and then just a uh, the, another stain, stainless steel clip here. And then for my steering, I was using a, a centering pin, uh, but it kept falling out. So I just tied two ropes, or, or two, two lines here, uh, and they kind of stick in the uh, cotter pins that hold the motor uh, to the mount. And they, uh, whenever it's in the down position, it holds the motor straight. Um, I don't think I'll set up steering on this. Uh, just because I'll have to drill some holes in the kayak and I really don't like doing that. Uh, but I think it works as is for now and it's, it's suiting my needs just fine uh, being stuck in a straight position. Um, when I get somewhere and I need to turn or make some invasive maneuvers, I just pick the motor up and use my rudder and my, my pedals. Um, so yeah, it really doesn't bother me that it only uh, goes in a straight position. All right, so and then let's talk about the mount. Um, this is a special mount that you don't get with the new port. You have to order this separately. Uh, it's by One Objective. And I believe they call it the PA mount, but it also fits on the Outback. And what it does is, you see here, it angles the motor to the left when you have it in the up position. And that's super helpful because if it was going straight up and down, it would be in the way, my, my box would be in the way. I'd have to pull the string up over the box and then that would just be in the way whenever I need to open my box. So I like it uh, going this way instead. It's easier to route the cable around, or I mean the string, to pick it up and uh, keep it in the up position that way. All right. So I think that's just about it. Oh, here's a little thing. This is a little dry box. I keep my wallet in here. Um, just so I can have it uh, access it easily in case uh, the game warden never stops me. And uh, I just use these little cheap tethers from Amazon. You can get like 10 of them for like 20 bucks or something. Um, and that's just about it. I'm a little kind of forgot one thing. So, my back, that big battery back there. It just runs the new port, and, um, and here I have my other battery, and it is a, a Nakwa. It's a Nakwa 20 amp hour battery, and I just like the ease of using that battery. It's uh, pretty simple to charge and everything. I've never had any issues with it. I know some people have, but. I've never had any issues with mine. And also back here, I have my wheels. This is the uh, HD cart from Hobie. It goes in the scuppers. Um, 
It's a little controversial because it's known to cause some issues, especially in a weighted down kayak of uh, cracking the hull. Um, I'm, so far I've had good luck with mine on this boat and in all the other previous boats I've used it on. Uh, so no complaints from me right now. Uh, but eventually I do want to upgrade this to more of a bunk style cart. But yeah, that's, that's my kayak right there. That's my rig. All right, and the last thing we'll go over is how I load and transport my kayak because I believe this gear is just as important as all the other gear that I just showed uh, that I use for fishing. Uh, this gear helps me get my kayak to and from the lake without causing any issues, uh, without harming the kayak, and without the kayak going through someone's windshield. So it's very important stuff. Um, and uh, we'll just go over this equipment and also how I load my kayak. So uh, up front, I have one of these uh, cam lock straps um, with uh, hooks on it, and that just uh, ties into some uh, some uh, brackets on my truck bed. Excuse you. Some grackles over there. Uh, but yeah, these are cam lock straps. Uh, this is what you need to use for your kayak. Don't use uh, ratchet straps because you can over tighten them and crack your kayak's hull. So I have one up here in the front and that goes over the gunnel, under the H rail, through the cockpit, under the other H rail, and over the other gunnel. Um, and that's uh, just to kind of Put a strap through the kayak to keep it from going back and forth. Next is the little bungee cord here. Uh, this is used to keep your um, Mirage Drive in the up position when you go in shallow water. Um, but I use it for keeping my seat nice and tight against the hull. Uh, so there's not a lot of wind coming up over the cab of my truck. Um, but when there is and the seat's loose, it'll fly open and I don't like it flopping around and having that pressure on it and everything. Uh, so I take that bungee and I just kind of keep it held down, make sure my seat's buckled back here and that it's attached to the, um, the seat mount securely. Next I take my wheels because they're usually muddy, dirty, and nasty. I take them and I put them uh, upside down through the hole, um, through the scupper holes there. And then I take one of the bungees and I usually run it through the frame and I clip it back in and that just kind of keeps it from bouncing out. Because uh, I have been over a railroad track and these uh, wheels bounced out and they just landed right here, thankfully. Uh, but after that, I started making sure they were secured so they wouldn't bounce out. And then the other strap is uh, back here across the back. And this one's purpose is just to keep this thing from bouncing up and down. Uh, so it is attached to the uh, bed extender. I'll go over that in a sec. Um, but again, these are just cam lock straps. Uh, that's just keep me from over tightening and uh, damaging my hole. All right, and then the bed extender is a uh, Malone bed extender. It's not a straight bar, it has that little incline there, so if I go up a, a steep hill, it doesn't drag on the ground. Uh, that's a huge improvement over just the cheapo Harbor Freight one because that one's just a straight bar and you will scrape it on the ground if you go up a steep, a steep hill and you have a, a lower truck like mine. Um, and then uh, on the uprights I have uh, some full noodle and that just kind of cushions it from the side and uh, gives it something to rub up on uh, except, uh, ex instead of metal and then on the t-bar I have some rope that I cooled around and that is just some you know rub of protection for the kayak and also it's a little bit of cushioning it's not a lot um, but honestly my kayak doesn't sit on this very much and if I do park overnight with the the kayak on the uh, the back of the truck I do uh, loosen the straps so they're not bearing down on this uh, metal bar here um, but yeah I just uh, cooled some cheap rope around here and that just uh, gives it something to, to rub on whenever I uh, load it up I pull it up on the bed of the truck and then last but not least is a safety flag. Uh, this is just a Yak Attack one. I don't recommend it because it's pretty big. In fact, I'm going to not link this one. I'm going to link a, a better one or one that I would think would do better um, than this one. Uh, I've actually had two of these and this one's lasted a lot longer than the first one. You see here, it's got so much surface area to fly through the wind it actually rubs on 
everything it touches and I've actually lost one of these because it just broke. Um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend this one. This is just, I had a coupon and that was the cheapest thing they had on their site. So, <laughs> but yeah, uh, get a safety flag if you're using uh, your truck bed like I am, uh, just because your kayaks tend to stick out pretty far. And that's just uh, for your safety and the driver behind you's safety. But yeah, that's, uh, that's how I load up my kayak and that's all my gear and accessories. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you have any comments about any of the stuff I showed today's, in today's video, uh, please leave a comment. Uh, but that's all for now, and thanks for watching. Bye.